Nix throws, touchdown. God bless Bo Nix. All the rookie quarterbacks saw action this week, and they all looked pretty good, except for Drake May, who was only given one series for whatever dumb reason. But I don't think I've ever seen so many downtrodden franchises receive an injection of hope as all of their new quarterbacks flashed in their first preseason games. Today is our week one preseason stock report. Which players and or whatever is making me go from Knicks to Bonite and which ones are giving us football flaccidness? A very serious condition that affects 97% of NFL fans every year. I, Brandon Perna, a full-blown Bowleaver, will tell you, and yes, that includes my new quarterback, Bo Nix, and the Broncos. First up, stock way up, Colts fans. For the shoe, beat the Broncos. Let's show them who the real horse is. This is our team. Go Colts! No! Hey, if you think your rookie quarterback saving your team, subscribe. Also, today's episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy and my code, That's Good. Look, if 10,000 people sign up at Underdog with my code, they owe me $1 million. But if you like playing daily fantasy football, I recommend Underdog. It's the best. It's the only one I've partnered with for the third straight year now. Also, they have higher or lower games where you guess stat totals for players. Plus, with my code, you get access to this Cortland Sutton special pick. The only way you can get the Cortland Sutton special is with my code. That's good. You can do it per game, but right now you can do season long totals and a play I like is the Bo Nix touchdown stat line. It's set at 16 and a half. That was an easy hire for me. You add another player, you gotta have at least two picks for the higher or lower game, but you can go uh, up to five, maybe even eight now. And each one you add, you multiply your, your payout if you win. But right now, Bo Nix is my best play. Link in the description. Code that's good. Hey. All right, to warm up for the regular season, I do have a few blops. It's the blop three plays of the week. Blop three, the NFL giving the announcers the freedom to body shame chain gang members in its biggest anti-gang campaign yet. It just seems absurd that in a game where they have GPS trackers on players' shoulder pads, they have 19 different levels of algorithms to measure everything in the NFL, we still use guys with glasses who are no longer yeah. what you call physically fit, trotting, tr trotting out a pair of sticks to measure first down. I thought I'd have to go back to middle school to hear somebody get called a four-eyed fatty. But instead, I just turned on a football game. Blop 2. Steelers fans having better arms than their quarterbacks. That's the only pass Steelers fans will see completed over the middle this season. In Blop 1, the new NFL sound effects. They are, oh my god, they're so good. Rookie out of Alabama. Running back with DPS and open. We bleed We bleed blue. And final now by Bob with help from... It's so perfect. I didn't even notice that was Michael Penix making a beautiful throw. All right, stock down right now. The Patriots coaching staff are playing Drake May one series. Every other rookie quarterback got a chance to look cool, make one nice throw, except for poor Drake. Do you know what one series does for a rookie? It makes them think they suck for at least a week. Stock up. Joe Milton. <laughs> I'm a man who understands football, okay? I know that this play is meaningless, a play against the lowest tier of competition, but damn, that was pretty fun, Joe. Stock down, everyone saying, looks like the Patriots found another six round quarterback to replace the first round QB. Oh, you better watch out. But back to Drake May. Uh, I don't really understand the rationale of giving three quarters of the game to Bailey Zappi and Joe Milton. One of those guys will be a third stringer, and one of them will be on another team by the start of the regular season. God, just imagine going to a Patriots preseason game thinking, you know what, at least we'll get to see a, a steady dose of Drake May today, and then getting stuck with 20 attempts from Bailey Zappi. 
Oh, and if for some reason you tuned in to, to see Bryce Young in year two, <laughs> you were instead treated to 30 combined passes from Jake Lutton and Jack Plummer. No, not Jake Plummer, Jack Plummer, also wearing number 16. And no, there is no relation. Now, Bryce Young wasn't exactly stellar as a rookie, and I think he could have used all the reps he could get in that new system under new head coach Dave Canales. But far be it for me to question a 2-15 team. Stock down, Delta Airlines. Uh, I'm just glad that all of the Panthers players are still with us after their airplane ran off the taxiway. This obviously could have been a total disaster, but luckily the plane stayed upright. Flight officials are saying that if Bryce Young was just one inch taller, the plane would have flipped over and everyone inside would have likely perished. So I guess you should be glad you didn't take CJ Stroud, Carolina. And no, David Tepper didn't throw his drink on the pilot causing the accident, but you were right to think that. You were. Stock up, Russell Wilson, who didn't even play. Maybe the greatest calf injury in the world as Russ kept the starting job by doing nothing. Justin Fields dropped a couple snaps and took a sack on third down. Center Nate Herbig took the blame after the game, which was admirable. Fields noted that he simply wasn't used to her big ass yet on those snaps. Because his name's Herbig? If you think this episode's getting better than that one, just get the fuck out now because I promise you it is not. That is perfection. He wasn't he wasn't used to her big ass. <laughs> the, the snaps. Because the center's got to, the quarterback's got to put his hand under the center's bottom. Look, I thought Fields made a couple really nice throws, specifically this one. But Pittsburgh played pretty sloppy. Six penalties, they missed a PAT, they muffed a punt, and Tank Dell worked their defense early. Justin Fields was fine, but it's weird to me that I'm evaluating him in my heart on the same curve as all the rookie quarterbacks, and I don't even think he was the best on that curve. Stock down, the nerds who are scared of preseason head injuries wearing those horrid guardian caps. I said whoever wears one first wins nerd of the year in my prediction episode. I was kidding. I didn't think anybody would actually do it. Well, we got my first nerd of the year contenders guard James Daniels and uh, running back Jonathan Taylor. Thank you guys for your service, you fucking nerds. Stock up the Eagles, fourth string defense coming up clutch in a tie game with 15 seconds left. This strip sack set up the game winning kick uh, and the best finish of the preseason so far. Unfortunately for quarterback Emory Jones, that was his only snap in the game. Stock up QB Jaden Daniels on his first completion. The second overall pick didn't get a ton of action against the Jets, just 11 snaps, but he took advantage of his three passing attempts, hitting on two of them for 45 yards, the vast majority coming on that first throw. And apparently, according to head coach Dan Quinn, Daniels checked out of a screen pass to a go ball on that play, which Quinn said was like buzzing the tower in Top Gun. And after the game, they all took off their shirts and played a round of homoerotic beach volleyball. Stock up the UFL and UFL champion quarterback Adrian Martinez throwing a 35 yard dot to UFL receiver Brandon Smith. You love to see it, UFL, UFL, UFL. Caleb Williams, stock up, throwing on the run. I think Caleb Williams got Bears fans the most excited they've been for a quarterback since. Well, well, since Justin Fields in 2021, <laughs> I'm kidding. I just started to understand the plight of Bears fans searching for a QB, and I refused to squash their optimism. I think Caleb Williams looked better than Fields did three years ago, primarily because he was doing it against a tough first string defense in Buffalo. Williams was four of seven passing, including a drop for 95 yards, plus 13 on the ground against the Bills in his debut. Probably the most impressive part was seeing him deliver the ball from different arm angles, improvising, and somehow getting off this screen pass. One of the things that got lost in all of the nail painting and the crying and all that shit is that Caleb Williams has a rifle for an arm, which is perfect for playing in Chicago. Stock up, Zoomers. 
QB, J.J. McCarthy, threw a pick on his first series, but rebounded nicely, connecting on 11 of 17 for 118 yards through the air, including a pair of long TDs. I actually think he had the best performance of any of the rookie QBs and might start earlier than anyone outside of Minnesota expected. There's something to like from pretty much every single one of his throws. First throw here, you see great placement with pressure in his face. Second throw, just an absolute FDR who is on the dime for uh, those of you who are, are uh, stupid. This is just an NFL throw to the sideline. Great pocket navigation here for the completion and another completion where he gets hit. And oh yeah, can see the middle of the football field. I didn't think there was a quarterback competition in Minnesota, but now I think there is. Stock up, receiver, Tristan Jackson. Uh, Jackson was the only receiver this week to get 100 yards, which is crazy considering nobody is out there playing an entire game. Oh, good route on him, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Were you talking about Tristan? Stock up. Rookie edge rusher Dallas Turner getting a clutch sack in the red zone here. Stock down. Raiders quarterback Aiden O'Connell taking a zero awareness sack in the red zone. Stock up. Parker Washington. Stock down. Hype on the new kickoffs. Jaguar second year receiver Parker Washington had the first noteworthy kickoff return of the new dynamic kickoff era, which I'll admit had not been particularly dynamic until he did this. 73 yards is by far the longest kickoff return of the preseason. Stock down. KC longtime uh, special teams coach Dave Tobe for not teaching his players that this is a safety now and not a touchback. You're slipping, Dave. You're slipping. And yes, that, that really is a safety. Stock up. Jags receivers uh, are going to catch everything forever. They are done letting Trevor Lawrence down. First, Devin DuVernay had a great concentration grab here. Uh, DuVernay, of course, is a former All-Pro as a returner with the Ravens. And I think having him and Washington back deep on kicks could be a problem. But probably the most encouraging part of the Jaguars' win was the performance of 23rd overall pick rookie wideout Brian Thomas Jr. His former LSU teammate Malik Neighbors has been getting most of the buzz for various reasons during training camp, but Thomas had the biggest highlight grab of the preseason week one, hauling in this CJ Beathard pass with one hand. Stock up running back Braylon Allen. The New York Jets might have the headiest two-headed monster in their backfield. Thanks to the fourth round back out of Wisconsin, Allen only got six rushing attempts, but managed 54 yards thanks to a 24-yard rip. Just watch Allen run, and you're gonna be impressed. He was ranked number one in explosive run rate, which that, it's not, that's not a real stat, but it sounds cool as shit. Allen is also the youngest player in the league at age 20, and he won't be able to take a sip of beer until January 20th of 2025. So if you see him drinking any alcohol, please report him to the cops. Stock up, Malik Mustafa. Haskins. Whoa, that's a big hit there. Did not make it. More like Mustafa. Stock up, Jordan Love fantasy drafters. Love threw two passes for 63 yards and a touchdown, which is crazy because his first pass was a loss of one yard to Josh Jacobs, whose stock is down after not breaking that tackle. But fuck, one play later, Love tosses a 64-yard TD to Dontavian Wicks, who just toasted safety Ronnie Hickman for six. Stock up, my fear of the Chiefs. Oh, cool! Another chief nobody can tackle. Who's that guy? Don't give a shit. Oh, cool! Another chief who can catch anything Mahomes flings at him. Who is that guy? Well, that's Justin Ross. Just a dude Kansas City has been patiently waiting to develop for two years. Unfortunately, it wasn't all good news for Kansas City as Hollywood Brown dislocated his shoulder and then had to spend the night in a Jacksonville hospital. There's a good chance he misses some time with that injury, but the fact that he survived a Jacksonville Hospital means he's ready to battle back. Speaking of Mahomes lookalikes, even rookie quarterback Spencer Rattler found the end zone with a nice rush, rush, rushing touchdown in the Saints game. 
stock up. Rookie Dolphins running back Jalen Wright averaging 5.5 yards per carry. He totaled 55 yards, netting 20 after contact and demonstrated elite vision and footwork on this TD run. Adding another weapon like Wright to that Dolphins backfield with Mostert and A-Chan is going to be too much fun for Mike McDaniel. And we know Mike McDaniel likes to have fun. In past lives, I have vaped. The 2024 NFL Draft was very offensive heavy, which is why Texas defensive tackle Byron Murphy, stock going up, was sitting there for the Seahawks at pick 16. Just the second defensive player taken, and he generated pressure and is already blowing up the run. A huge need for Seattle, who gave up the second most rushing yards per game last season at a buck 38. Stock down the Giants offensive line. Both Drew Locke and Tommy Adavido, ah yeah, my chiquica, were sacked on their first series against the Lions. Locke also threw a, a, a pretty terrible pick. So I guess you can pick a Locke. <laughs> Preseason for everyone but me. I'm in mid-season form, mother lickers. But if you're hoping to see some improvement in the trenches for the Giants, it didn't happen early in this game. And finally, the game you've been waiting for. God bless Bo and Knicks. Broncos fans patiently waited. We have listened to everyone shit on our team. And Bo Knicks came in after Jarrett Stidham got a couple series, and all Bo did was make me Bo leave. We've got a fighting chance to not be terrible. Bo Knicks' first series wasn't great. Not gonna sugarcoat it. His first two passes were bad. He nearly sent Greg Dulcich to the hospital. But to be fair, that's where I think Bo thought Greg Dulcich lived. And just like J.J. McCarthy, after he settled down, Knicks went 15 for 21 and threw a touchdown. Uh, Knicks should have had two touchdowns because he dropped an absolute FDR here, but Josh Reynolds let it slip through his hands. Something I don't think we've ever seen Josh Reynolds do before, actually. Fires over the middle and it is incomplete. Goff over the middle and it's dropped. Oh, it was a first down gimme! So let's give Knicks two touchdowns on the day, and his second TD was as impressive as a one-yard touchdown throw can be. And that's not a joke. Perfect play action. Bo sells it and then fires a laser to the front corner of the end zone where only Marvin Mims can make a play on it. Bo moved the chains with his legs a couple times and just looked like he was doing the things Sean Payton wanted. I think the toughest thing to factor in is Indy committed two PIs to help move Denver downfield on two scoring drives while Bo was playing, which made things easier for him, but he was, he was good. He was more than decent, damn it. And don't you try to take that away from me. Stock down, the NFL officials. Tim Patrick has missed two full seasons with back-to-back -back horrific injuries during training camp. He caught his first pass in over two and a half years after rehabbing nonstop for over 720 days and these refs flag him for taunting? The only way to end this bullshit is by purchasing a bag of my coffee, the fuck the refs blend over at benchwarmerbrew.com where all proceeds of this coffee go to educating officials on what not being a complete jerk looks like. Another nugget from this game, the Broncos didn't give up a single sack. And at this rate, they are on pace to allow zero sacks all season long, which I'm guessing uh, would be an NFL record. Stock down. Maybe up, but mostly down. That would be quarterback Stetson Bennett, who is playing football for the first time since the 2023 preseason. Bennett, who won the national championship twice at Georgia and became a fourth round pick of the Rams over a year ago, spent his rookie season rehabbing, and not the kind that Tim Patrick was doing. That's the story at least, but the Rams have been rather quiet about it. Anyways, it was good to see him back on the field, but it was also bad to see him back on the field because Bennett threw four interceptions against the Dallas Cowboys, one for each quarter of football, and there should have been a fifth, but a penalty negated it. But then he threw the game winner, so all is forgiven for Stetson Bennett, right? It's kind of insane to think that the Rams actually picked Bennett last year before they selected Puka Nakua. The Rams were praised for finding Puka, but we should remember they also missed on Puka, when you think about it. And that's your week one preseason stock report. Next Monday, we will have week two. That's how counting works. If you like the way I count, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Yay!
Hey! <laughs>